Hello, friends, and welcome back to this week's episode of the Embodied Healing Self. So I'm super excited once again to share another amazing guest speaker with you this week, somebody who clearly was just dropped into my life at divine timing. And, you know, I'm just so happy that I listened to the messages that were calling me to reach out to her. Her name is Tamara Arnold. She is an author of three books. My Kid is Driving Me Crazy, which just sounds interesting in and of itself. Like we can all relate to that, right? In whatever way that shows up. The Magical Business Method. And then her newest book, The Blind Leap, which is available digitally. Yep. But keep your eyes peeled for also your, your copy that is your copy going to be printed as well? Oh yeah, Soon, they're they're in the, they're in the process. I'm getting them mailed right now to to yeah. have hold them, and when I give the approval, there'll be print copies for that. Too. This is like very newly birthed, so this is all kind of happening right now. You guys can jump on this and and check out her book. She's also the host of the podcast Own Your Intuitive, which is how I found her. I love the podcast. I know there are many podcasts out there to listen to, and I am telling you that there is so much wisdom and little golden nuggets on this podcast. I just can't get enough. I'm trying to catch up. She has a couple of shows that I really love. There's one about um, opening your crown chakra, trusting your third eye, and those are some shorter episodes. And then a recent episode that I really enjoy, the one about the quantum playground, which um, with Matthew, what's his last name? Matthew Patty. Yeah. Matthew Patty. Thank you. So yeah, just if you are looking for a podcast to help you move further into what we're about to talk today about owning your own intuitive gifts, which most of us who are listening on the show probably are already in the space of knowing that this is something that you're being called to do. I invite you to also check out her show. So thank you so much, darling, for being here. She's also Canadian. Yeah. Which Canadians are always just so much fun. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> I, I, I just have to say that because um, that, that is part of your energy, part of your spirit. We both talk um, a lot of the same language. We talk about energy and vibration. And I've always known since I was very, very young, that was the world I lived in. And so every time I listen to your show, it's like you're speaking my language. And then when I found out you were a Canadian, I was like looking at your, you know, you're just, your personality is so fun. You bring some humor to it. You bring some lightness to it. And I really appreciate that about you. And I was like, oh, of course, like she's got the, her Canadian humor, which I totally appreciate. So well, thank, thank you, you for being here, Tamara. Thank you. I yeah. thank you for all of that. I wow. I am just open to receiving and so grateful to be here and to share in your magic and the magic that you share with your people. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I want to start out by sharing. Um, you know, this message comes through a lot in your shows about trusting the divine timing of things and um, how things can show up as a vibrational match and how we can be called into certain experiences because of the vibration that we're holding or which can be an emotion. It can be a thought. It can be many, many things. And I actually, the podcast I recorded last week that came out yesterday was exactly about this topic about how I approached a particular situation from a vibrational match of um, coming at it from kind of my survivor self and how it ended up, my higher self ended up showing me the bigger picture because I didn't come from a healthy place, that yeah. I still had something that wanted to be healed and nurtured. And what I want to say about that is, is, and you talk about this in some of your shows too, it might have been the crown chakra one, when we open up to receive that, to receive the energy, because we and I both believe, like we are always evolving. We are always being called to expand and move into this space. And when the listeners who are listening on the show are probably already aware of this, this space because they're listening to this particular show. But there's a moment in time where we get to kind of choose and allow ourselves to either go back to the safer pattern or to kind of like lean in and allow ourselves to expand even more, which was my experience through the process just really like five days ago where an uncomfortable situation invited me to lean in more. And, you know, when I think about owning your intuitive 
and how long it took me to do that. That was the reason it took so long because it was uncomfortable to really trust something that wasn't completely tangible in the moment, to trust the present moment that everything would unfold for me. And then also to, and, and I, I say this because I know I'm not alone, and also not only to trust, but also the fear of like, um, well, who am I to be intuitive, right? When we all really have access to this. Mm -hmm. And then also the fear around, um, I guess being judged or not feeling kind of safe, showing up in our true gifts. And somehow when I see you and I hear you on your podcast, this is something that you have appeared to in some way, just completely mastered and stepped into. So I'm really curious about how that all unfolded for you. Very uncomfortably. Let me just put that out there. Like if somebody thinks that diving deep into the space of releasing, you know, our preconditioned patterns that we've picked up since childhood is a joyful skip down like memory lane. It is not. And I, I say this with great love because I think that there's a level of discomfort that people are afraid of. And it's that level of discomfort that prevents them from leaning in as you did five days ago to, to the experience that has created the level of expansion that they stay in, right? Mm -hmm. So that safe, protected bubble or container that everything is known in. So I got to the first real pinnacle of my experience in the most wretched way. And I say wretched with great love because you know, my first book is called My Kid is Driving Me Crazy, a mom survival guide for living with a child with mental illness. And so, you know, I had given birth to Ethan when I was 20 years old and I came from a family with mental illness. I was trying to actually run away from it in truth. And then the universe was like, honey, you are not done. Mm -mm -mm. And now we are going to give you the most high maintenance child we can possibly give you because we wouldn't, like Ethan chose me. I knew that this was part of my journey. It did not feel like that in the moment. But when our relationship got really toxic and I say toxic, toxic because it was. And, you know, I've been in therapy this whole time. Like I did not do this by myself. They've always had somebody to support my, my psyche and my emotion through the, through the process. But when I got to a place where, you know, me and my new husband were not sleeping and, you know, we had three other kids we were protecting and it was like, we, we didn't know what each day would hold. We just knew it was going to be terrible we decided to tell us our 16 year old son at the time, like you seek medical help or you can't come home. Cause he had, we'd found him with a chair and a cord. A year later, he did something that was so toxic that we had to break up. Now the breakup lasted six months, but it was in that darkness. And I don't think that it has to get this far. You guys, I'm just experiencing, like sharing my story. Not everybody's experience is the same. Not everybody has to go through the dark shadow of the soul to start to have you know, that, that light. But for me, that was my journey. I'd been avoiding the dark because of my genetics and my hereditary and my ancestral and all of the, the past life stuff. Right. And so right. I, I didn't want to, um, delve in there, but when Ethan and I broke up, it forced me to, and that was the day that I went into depression. And that was the day that mm -hmm. I got so low. I didn't know the difference between night and day, who I was, where I was going, what I was doing, because up until then I had lived my life codependently fixing other people. And when all of that went away and it was just me, I was like, oh, shizers, can I swear? Oh yeah. Okay, I was like, oh shit, who the frick am I without my kid, right? Like I didn't know who Tamara was because I had given Tamara away to everybody else. And in that moment of not knowing, that was my first rebirth, because we're going to go through many of them. And in that darkness, I was guided every single day. I would say, what is one thing that I can do today to feel just a little better than yesterday? And I would hear 
a message. And at the time I didn't know what it was. I just thought I was talking to myself, you know? <laughs> and so I, I'd receive, take a shower, um, go for a walk, make a therapy appointment, get your hair done, something. But I took action on that receive every day. I don't know why, but I did. And eventually that receive was meditate. And I never meditated before. I didn't even know what meditation, I had been like avoiding the spiritual world. I hated God to tell you the truth because I had daddy issues back then. And so I was all like, what? You want me to what? And I leaned in Facebook. You know, it's funny because we were talking about, we are guided to the very thing that we need in the moment that we need it. A 30 day with uh, meditate with the angels with Carrie Samuels came up on my computer somehow. And I was like, who, what? Sure, this must be what I'm meant to do because again, I heard meditate and now this is presented to me. I pressed, you know, yes to that. I slept through 30 days of meditations. Legitimately, when it would start, I would sleep, she would end, I would wake. That was what my first 30 days of meditation was like. But deep down, I knew it was doing something subconsciously that I wasn't ready to do in my conscious brain. And so I kept going. And then I started to receive messaging in my meditation. Then I thought I was crazy because I started to hear the messaging outside of meditation. I made an appointment with my therapist. I was like, uh, I need to talk about this because I'm hearing things. She was amazing because I've been seeing her since I was in my early 20s. And her response, because I was already drawn to her for a reason, she was part of my path. And so when I literally said, so I'm hearing voices and I'm like literally driving and, you know, my, my grandfather is talking to me or my ex's grandfather is talking to me. It's just like, I, please tell me I'm normal. And her response in that moment was, I, it, now, you're, now you're ready. And I said, uh, ready for what? And she said, A Course in Miracles. And I'd never heard of A Course in Miracles. I didn't know what she was talking about, but I was like, yes, yes, I am. Whatever this is, this is, because she was placed in my path for that moment, right? And, and just like everything else we were talking about synchronistically, like everything that had happened led me to that moment. I started A Course in Miracles. I opened up my expanded state. And I think this is something to say for those who are listening, finding mentors in your moments of awakening and transformation are essential. I am so grateful that I had someone there to lead and guide me during that because even with her, I was freaking lonely. I was lonely when I was getting vertigo, when, you know what I mean? I was in a heightened sense of my senses and like snowflakes would drift onto my windshield and I would be like, okay, I, I can see every distinct feature on that snowflake and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be like that crystal clear. And then it was like, focus on your driving or the leaves are talking to you because you're, you have like a heightened sense of, of hearing. There, there's a lonely period in that. So surrounding yourself and finding a group of people that can help guide and steer you through that, I think that that's really, really powerful and really important. And so with gratitude, I said that therapist led me into A Course in Miracles where listening to that messaging became my life. Like I didn't know, and this is the thing that I think people don't talk about, about when we receive guidance, is it doesn't make sense. It never really made sense to me. They'd be like, make a coloring agenda. I'd be like, pardon? And they'd be like, make a coloring agenda. I'm like, well, but I <laughs> okay. Because I'd never, f and then I'd get the answer once I started, which is like, you've always felt like you never finished or completed anything you started. You've been leaning into that story for a really long time. It's time for you to, to change your story. And so I'd make this thing and I'd want it for a new year and it would show up on my door on December 31st. And then it was like, create an intention card deck. And I was like, why? Like, why? I don't understand. But I would listen. I'd receive the message. I would take action. And there were times where I didn't know why I was doing these things. But looking back in the programs that I run now, I gift everybody that coloring agenda and those intention cards when they join to work with me, right? So in the moments, you could be like, Ooh, interesting. And it comes to the second phase of growth, which was when I decided to write the book. And not, so I went through that transition of being able to awaken to my gifts by breaking up with my son, finding myself, my truth, my identity through meditation, being open to it. Then when I decided to write the book and I tried to write every other book, but the book I wrote, like I really sent like probably seven different book pitches to my, my book writing coach. And she was like, so you want to write a dating book for single women? And I was like, I was like, no. And then I'm in the shower and it's like, you need to write 
about your son's mental illness. And I was like, man, no. And I'm crying, right? Like I'm crying. I'm like, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to live through that experience again. I don't want to, you know, we've worked so hard. And this is something we often say, I've worked so hard to get here. I don't want to go back to these darker places. Like, like it's almost like by avoiding them, they've gone away, which is the polar opposite of what's happening, friends. What's happening is when we are not putting our awareness on it, it's actually subconsciously running and dictating how our world is evolving around us, right? And so by deciding to write that first book, as uncomfortable as it was, was like me shining the light into the areas of my life that I was trying to avoid. And I explained that writing that book busted open my throat chakra and my root chakra, which was the most excruciating experience I'd ever gone through. That was my second stint into depression, choosing to write this book. And I say it only lasted like a couple months and it was in the, in the, and it, it, when I say depression, you have to understand that depression for me is I cry, I curl up in a ball, I don't wanna see people, I don't wanna to talk to people, I don't wanna experience the external world because I need to turn within. I need to go into my own cocoon to do the deeper dive. Like I explain the levels of our energetic floors or our chakras as like literal houses. We are a human house and these are floors. And we have been collecting boxes on these floors since the day we were born. And if we think that we can just hire a house cleaner to come in and dust it, that we've done the job of clearing out the experiences or the triggers or the emotions that we're carrying, we're kind of not really being honest with ourselves, right? Yeah. When we have, and I love Reiki, I use Reiki, I use all of these experiences, but um, when we do that, we get that like hit of happiness. It's like, you know, if we did have a lot of boxes on our energy floor and somebody came and they swept the floor and dusted the boxes, we would get that heightened lift, right? We feel a little bit better, but eventually we go back into the same pattern. We need to be willing to actually open the boxes and say, ooh, ah, this is a very interesting box. Look what's in here. Oh yeah, this is this box is why when my children leave their socks on the floor, I freak out and get so angry. This is the box that says, you know, I got in trouble every time I left anything or I didn't do my chores. Hmm. Right? And we don't realize how much the experience that we're actually in right now is simply just a reflection of what, what we learned. Right. So that, that writing the, that book was my, my second listen. And that was when I received that I could read chakras and I had never studied a chakra gen in my life. Never. I didn't know the colors. I didn't know the symbols. I didn't know. And yet there was a message that I was like walking out of my bathroom after blow drying my hair and it just drops right in. And they're like, you can read chakras. And I was like, wrong human. I think you're in the wrong <laughs> bathroom hallway. Go find another human. And they're like, no, it's you. And I was like, no, okay. But I don't know anything about it. And they're like, trust us. Like, let us guide you. And this is the part that you're talking about. But everything that they had done with me up until this point only made my life better. Every piece of guidance I received only created expansion. So when I downloaded I Can Read Chakras, I just simply went to my computer and said, hey, apparently I can read chakras. Who, who will let me practice on them? pooped my pants and then started reading energy. <laughs> and that was the moment that I started to do like 40 a week. Like I didn't just like tiptoe in. I just kept going. I need more to practice. I need more to practice because it was so guided and people were having experiences mm -hmm. and they were like, Oh my God, how did you read that? There were things I didn't even know existed in this world. And I'd be an energy. I'd be like, uh, mm like possessions and like different things. I didn't know anything about these things, but I could feel them and I could read them in people's energy. And so it was the greatest teacher and lesson for me to evolve and to expand my own awareness of what is capable in this world and on different dimensions because I was reading it and they were guiding me. Because I always say, if we're going to have one teacher, wouldn't we choose that teacher over all teachers? That's just my thought. Yeah. But that level yeah. of discomfort always creates the next level of, of expansion. We only resist the very thing that is going to lead us towards our next greater Mic being. <laughs> right? I mean, totally. Mic drop. Yeah. You're exactly right. Which is how we started this conversation and how I led into the question. 
And um, wow, so much yes in everything that you said. Um, we share a vibrational frequency on the whole, um, you know, mothering the, I would like to say, spirited, wildly sensitive child. That's what I would like to say um, in my situation and how we were able to lean into how difficult that situation was for both of us to allow ourselves to, to become more expansive. And I, would like um, to say I, I was not awakened when Ethan needed me to be awakened yet, right? So we had a very different relationship. Like uh, one now that I like, so he is gifted and he, he is an empath and he's highly sensitive and both my kids are, but without me knowing that I wasn't a, I wasn't able to be the parent that I could support that with. And so I, but without judgment, I'm okay with that because it wasn't part of our journey. Well, and he, and we know they choose us. So we are always everything we need to be. And yes. really um, in the expanded consciousness of spirit, there really is no space and time. So yes, <laughs> like there. Yeah. So, and uh, you know, I just two podcasts ago had um, a guest where in the experience, it was called Embody Your Light Body. So much revelation came in the moment where the words that you just said, I can totally relate to. And I want to speak to that, actually. Uh, whew, I'm feeling a lot of energy in my body right now. So um, the, the I wasn't ready yet. Um, when, and we spoke about this just before we came on, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I wasn't ready yet either. I actually did some really deep healing recently, two years ago, where when I went back to heal on a physical, because I was so heavily medicated near death experience, I actually couldn't consciously remember what happened. So when I was able to go into my higher consciousness, I saw the whole thing from a higher self perspective. And I could go all the way back to this particular day when her spirit was wanting to come in as I was pregnant and I wasn't ready. She was such a high vibration. I, I was living in a lower vibration. I couldn't receive it, but she decided she was ready. And so she came two months early and it all just boomed just like that. And my husband remembered that day. And I say that because here's what I, here's what I'm hearing is <laughs> this is happening right now. This is happening. What is happening is that there are, there are many of us walking around and being called to embody this, we can call it awakened. We can just call it higher consciousness. We can just call it um, higher soul expression, whatever we want to call it, right? But you and I think energetically, vibrationally. So we're being asked to like receive this awakened, whatever, there's different words for it. But we, our human condition is not completely in alignment with the vibration that is ready to receive it based on our choices, our beliefs, our belief system, our choices, whatever we're choosing. And so what I'm hearing you say, in my own words, is that you are a person who sees this energetically in the body because I started out, I started out health coaching. I was former mechanical engineer after my health crisis, of course, after healing my daughter and myself with food was like, Oh, food can heal everything. And then I had a second health crisis and I was like, Oh, it's not just about food. It's, I have to like, you know, honor my spirit and all. So, but it can show up in the physical body. And what I hear you saying is you have this way of noticing when energy vibration in the body is kind of out of frequency to hold the person's highest vibration to, to call in, to embody that higher vibration, because that was your very experience tangibly as um, in the physical realm as a parent, like your vibration, like your soul is calling you into this vibrational match for your son. And you can't, you, your human condition self wasn't quite in alignment yet. And then it all just happened. And now you're in this place where you are 
what he was, what he knew you were going to be, right? You just yes. didn't know when it was going to happen. Well, there's it's a whole crazy. lot of other things that I want to touch on here because I think this is important to say. I was an empath my whole life, but I, I chose to, again, without that guidance and support, numb myself. So I was an early um, drugs and alcohol kind of person. By the time I was 17, I had already started to learn that that was a way that I didn't have to feel what I was feeling. And I did this up until only a couple of years ago. And I say that with great love because I'm, I'm now in a place of conscious sobriety because it is more expansive for my gift. But, and I don't know why I'm feeling called to say this because like, this is the part that when you're like, you were vibrationally not like not there. I was like, no, I wasn't vibrationally there for everything. Anytime my vibration tried to change, I was like, Ooh, what can I do to put in my body right now? to stop this. But what was interesting is, I don't know if you know this about me, I was a personal trainer for nine years prior to stepping into coaching because I knew in my early twenties that I needed to work in places that only had the highest level of vibration that chose happiness and people would go to in order to uh, better their lives. So even though I wasn't optimally like living at my highest level at that time, I would, I, I worked only in as a fitness instructor and a personal trainer. And then I taught the course and then I got into nutrition and all these things because I could walk into the gym at any depleted state. And it's like, I was like whoop, plugging into people who are motivated and excited and happy and living their greatest life. And I would take that elevated energetic state home with me. And no matter what was going on at home, if it did deplete me, I knew I could go into work the next day and vibrationally lift. I used to say I was a sponge for other people's emotions because that was the only way I knew how to explain it. And people would say to me, like, Tamara, when you're in the gym, the gym, like when you're in a good mood, the gym's in a good mood. When you're in a bad mood, the gym's in a bad mood. But I was totally ignoring everything that, you know, the universe was bringing up to my life and to my experience until Hill, I was like 37. And I want to share that for any listeners who are like, oh man, it's late. I'm like, how old now? And I, you know what I mean? My awakening train, it's past. I can't jump on. I'm not going to be able to work in the consciousness field or quantum field or, you know, feel that enlightened. And it's never too late. It's, it's simply an agreement that you make with yourself. That is all it is. I just wanted to share. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I think it's just always the right time. And I think that you were called to share that because it, because you're not alone. We're not alone. Like, so like I started out by saying, um, you know, it took me so long. I was the same way. Now, and now it's easy for me to see because my children are this way, right? Super sensitive empath. And among other things, like, you know, always hearing, seeing everything and just being overwhelmed and then shutting it down. I was in the military. <laughs> like I could totally guarded everything. You were in the military? Yeah, girl. Oh man, I can't wait to interview you on my yeah, podcast, you, man. I've Seriously. Had so many lives. I've had so many lives in this life. <laughs> so many rebirths, right? But yeah, so I mean, really like, um, you know, the there's the the ego voice that comes in and says, like, like, who are you? And it's too late. And and, 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 and all it really is, is just coming home to your truth. It's actually more simple than we make it. And we get so wrapped up in our emotions and our pain and our story and the judgment and the fear and the beliefs that it creates an energetic block somewhere mm -hmm. in the chakras in the body, right? And I know where mine are and they are the throat chakra and the root chakra. <laughs> exactly where they? they were. Yeah, that's what it's why I was called to do the podcast. Um speaking my truth is um yeah, there's a wound around it and there's and I can so and it manifested physically 5 years ago as a second health crisis um as a a thyroid what did they call it? Whatever. It was like a really big thing. I ended up in the emergency room and you know, I healed it. I mean, as of now, as of five years, I've been working with it naturally because I know there's an energetic component to it. I'm just going to, like, I know that, like, physically. Um, are you there? Or are you frozen? Hold on. We talked about this inner knowing of, like, this energetic thing that was being blocked or taking place. 
And what I want to say about that, that I love that you shared is that you said, I'm not, I don't know anything about chakras. I don't know, like, you know, what I'd never studied them or practiced them. And yet what was so strong is that inner knowing and that inner knowing is our intuition. It is that place. And I want to hear what, actually, I'm going to ask you, what would you say, how would you describe our inner knowing and our intuition? And I, I want to allow this space to be held for the, especially for listeners, because I think that there are so many people that know that they're living in this space, but they don't know how to own it or how to work with it or how to trust it. So what would you say is like, how would you describe your, that inner knowing or that intuition? Oh, I'm going to make this the most simple thing in the land because this does not need to be complicated. So this is what I coach all my clients. This is how I practice for myself. And it's, it's just one sentence and it is the first answer is the right answer. And I say that because we, that knowing is the response we feel or we hear or we see within a second. It's that, that is our intuition. That is our inner guidance system. That is our download from the universe. That is, you know, the moment of clarity. That is our aha. That is our greatest gift coming to us. It is all those things. And if we took a moment to simply respond and to react to that first thing we receive, a lot will shift and change because everything after that, and I think of like Mel Robbins with her five second rule, like in a little bit where she can't like you have five seconds when you have a thought to take action on it before you, you won't take action. The same thing for me when it is, is with intuition. The first answer is the right answer. Everything else you hear is your ego. Mm -hmm. right? So like we receive the answer 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You have a thought, you think the thought of like, Ooh, you know, I'm thinking about working with this mentor. Maybe, uh, you know, I should do it. And you'll hear like a, yes, like your whole body will feel the vibration through. And then your brain goes, well, you, can you afford it? What about the time? Like, da -da 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 -da. like off in a tangent, you go down the rabbit hole of ego and illusion and creating a fantasy that isn't real. But you had that, you had that vibration of intuition. It could be, you know, that you're driving and you get that hit of intuition to turn left instead of right and to take the scenic route, right? In that moment, you don't question it. Most often when you're driving because you don't have the time for the, the brain to get a hold of it, you just are responding to the thought, right? Like it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I, that would be nice. I'm gonna take the scenic route. You know, when you're thinking about going to friends' parties or places, like you get it. You get like, oh, you know, my body's tired. It needs, a, it needs a day of rest. It needs a day of reflection. But then your mind gets in and says, oh, they're going to be mad and you're going to let people down and everything's going to happen, right? Like we don't give our intuition the, the space for it to actually breathe because we clutter it with the thoughts that are our pre-patterned experiences. So if we simply just got into the first answer is the right answer, ask yourself a question, whatever you receive, what if that was it? Yeah. How simple could it be? Yeah, I love how you have a way of just really just simplifying it and not overcomplicating it and not making it something that feels, you know, unattainable or because it's actually part of who we already are. And I love how you share that. And I'm curious, what do you remember the the specific moment, I know you gave me the bigger picture, but the specific moment where you, because you had a moment where your energy shifted. You had a moment where you cleared out an old pattern and welcomed in a new way of being. You welcomed in a new way of being in this, how you're showing up now. Do you remember that moment? With each different, so like, I, I just want to precede this too with, I, I truly believe in the way that I'm being guided to coach and support others is like, we, our first phase of doing this work is to simply get to a space of receiving what the universe is already trying to bring to us. So it's yes. not about unpacking everything. It's simply about making enough room through the seven floors that you can get that receive all the way down to your root, root chakra, where there's like a mirror there and it's your bat signal and like a reflection that goes back up. But that doesn't mean that there's, so when you say that to me, I'm like, yeah, I remember when I down, like when I received that, my, like my awakening, I told you it was very uncomfortable. My brain ached 
it was through this early meditation process where it was like as different parts of my brain were awakening and I was using them and hadn't used them before as a personal trainer, I could only explain it's like, if I did a lot of bicep curls, my, my bicep would hurt. Right. Well, I was utilizing my brain in a whole new neurological pathway. I was like doing a major upgrade up there. And so my whole synaptic nerve system was, you know, pulling away from past experiences and relaunching a whole new like conversation mm -hmm. and synergistic like pathway. And so I was really uncomfortable with that because then the vert like who gets vertigo and says this yeah. is great i did because i didn't question it right like i knew that that's that in tune when you when you ask the answer from within and not expect somebody on the external to know the answer for you yes right? and so when i was experiencing it it was simply like a drop down is this am i okay oh yeah this is what it is and so i'd receive we're just you know we're opening up your brain to new experiences. And I'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I didn't go somewhere else and say to my husband, hey, you know, I'm not asking the people who don't know the answer, what do you think? And they're, cause they're gonna say, something's wrong with you. You should go to the doctor, that's vertigo. Get some on some medication, right? So even I'll explain the beginning of this year, there was a massive upgrade happening for me, like so uncomfortable. And I put it into like a six month container Jen. So I built my business since 2017 to the beginning of 2019. And then in order for the next expansion to happen, the level of expansion that I'm moving into required me to get in there and clean up a lot of boxes because we can only be as successful as we have space within us to hold. So we just want to get to that first, like receive all the way down. So we, in the beginning, we're not comfortable. So we just want to get through <laughs> just enough of that box that we can get into that state. But then the more that you are leveling up and the more that you understand your stardust and what you're here on this earth to do, the willingness, because it's willingness, you guys, to go in when instead of out and get like, because the external world, when we start to get that, what's the word? Because even reading, the, uh, you know, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe like, Dispenza right now. Yeah. And he talks about when he finished his, the I think it was this book or another book. He had just finished What the Bleep Do I Know? And, um, you know, he was touring. And this is how I felt about leading up into 2019 is that I got to a place where everything was external. I was happy when I was working. I was happy when I was with clients. Yes. I was yes. happy. But when I was alone in those quiet moments, I wasn't happy. Something was missing. And, and so it's like, I needed to turn within and Joe talks about, Dr. Joe talks about how he canceled all of his, his like lectures and workshops for six months. Just like I shut down in the beginning of 2019 for six months and I went in and I created a space where I was showing up for myself, not for the external validation, not for the gratification, but because it was time for me to feel good all the time, not just in certain moments of the time. Okay. Right. So I want to, I want to just ask for permission to just allow the listeners to receive what you just said for a moment, okay. because what you just said was really powerful. And, um, so I just want to just take a moment and, um, I want to acknowledge, first of all, you using the word receive, because I think that's a really powerful word. We have those moments where we know, and then because it, it, we're thinking energetically, right? Yes. So energetically, are you allowing yourself to receive and trust and surrender to something bigger than you that you don't even, you don't even consciously know yet, right? What the outcome is going to be. So I think that is huge. And in my own words, I would say, I like to say like vulnerability is the gateway to your potential. It is in those moments where we allow ourselves to surrender and trust and receive and open up the healing. And then also understanding, and that's the embodied healing self podcast, right? It's, it's knowing when to discern when to seek mentorship around your healing because there is a time and a space for that oh yeah and then when to self-reflect and do your own inner work and take your own self-responsibility for your own personal healing well i don't think i've ever been without an external mentor even when it was therapists and then once i started working with coaches i've i think i've gone three months 
since 2016 that I wasn't in something for the external. And this is why I say it is, is for myself as an empath, I, as a highly sensitive, as somebody who vibration, somebody who is just a little bit, because I don't see it as like a steps. I see it as a linear line, right? Everything in life is a linear line. So either they're a little ahead of the path than me, um, but vibrationally, I align myself in their, in their downwind or their tailwind so that I am really choosing to expand faster by, by aligning myself where, where people's vibrations are higher than mine right? Because really collectively, we will always rise faster in that phase of alignment. If we surround ourselves with low vibrational people, that doesn't create the opportunity to expand as quickly. It's a lot more work. There's a lot more struggle. It's a lot harder. So aligning yourself with people like Jen is amazing. And you know, if there's somebody else that you're thinking about, like align yourself and let yourself get pulled up. So that's why mentorship for me is like, I'm like, who can I catch this down <laughs> downwind and make my ride easier and expand faster by utilizing their energy as a catalyst. Yes. Yes. That is the word that I've been hearing so much lately is catalyst. And if you remember before we actually started recording, um, one of the things that I said to you that I see in you is your ability to hold this space of like a higher vibration into the that what you did for me is it felt like you gave me permission to just be in the space of the vibration that you're holding, which is something that a mentor or a coach does for people. Yes. They hold that space for the person who is coming up into it to receive it, to receive it. Right. So true. But it's interesting because I'm, for those who are listening, who are healers, coaches, uh, trainers, health coach, whatever you are, I will give you the greatest gift that I gave myself, which is acknowledging your superpower to do that. Don't question that you are capable of holding these containers in these spaces for people. You wouldn't have stepped into it if you weren't. And so just really surrender to, to that because it will make things go a lot faster when you realize that you are put on this earth to create the communities, to create the collectives, cre create the tribes, whatever your word is that supports that expansion. And so you are the sacred container creators. Yes, awesome. Another little, I'm like speechless right now. Like, it's so true. Wow. Oh, so much good stuff, Tamara. Really, like, I I had something I was going to say, and now I'm just like another mic drop. Like, we are. We are all sacred space containers. And that is all we're actually really here to do, is just to hold our own sacred space and just allow ourselves to receive, again, that word, I keep hearing it so loudly, just receive that vibrational energy match that comes in. And I'm going to, can I piggyback on that a little bit? Because it came yes. through at the beginning of the podcast interview, and I really want to talk about this too, is when we get into the level of the crown chakra and receiving, there comes a place where I coach this, and so I'll share it with your people too, is to like for me, I got to a place where I was like, okay, God, you know, you, you put a big, you want me to do big things, then we need to have a chat, right? So I have no problem opening up to receive everything, but I want to know that you are up there like a bouncer and you are only bringing my highest good. So therefore I didn't need fear. And so some people put a real bouncer, Archangel Michael, loved ones who have passed, spirit guides, somebody at your crown that you know is literally holding a bat like baseball bat and just like putting away and sending away like a bunt or a home run away from you and your like vortex as Abraham Hicks would say and keeping you in a state of receiving at all times safely now what that also means is when you're open at that capacity it doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen that aren't juicy and amazing and awesome but when you understand at that level of receive that even if it's somebody breaks up with you or you know your child is acting up or you know the car breaks down or something there is a lesson in that there is a growth potential in that there is a reason why spirit let it in 
And instead of going, oh, they really let me down this time. Like I opened up and now look, right? It's simply an opportunity to be curious. Curiosity is the greatest like crown chakra gift we give ourselves. Where did this come from and why did I need it? Yeah. And, and in my own experiences, I'm sure you can relate to this. Every time we have those experiences, the vibration and the energy just seems to expand even more once we get through the process. Of that. Yes. And yes. Um, I want to thank you actually, because it was on one of your podcast episodes that you said this, which I think was your crown chakra episode that gave me permission to request. I started requesting in my meditations because I create space before every clarity call, like, you know, every, um, before I create content or whatever. And I just was like, Oh, that was easy. I, she just gave me permission to just request that whatever is like to be able to say like, not from that place of fear, but like, please only bring me the people that I'm here to serve today. That I'm here to serve. Like it, I don't, I'm not here to save everybody or help everybody. And so chances are, and I'm just going to like say this transparently, people who are listening to this show right now are in alignment with what we're sharing right now. So if you're listening to the show right now, you are probably a person who is growing into your own intuition, who is growing into your own trusting yourself and um, probably seeking some type of mentorship or some healing that needs to be done. And um, I want to say that acknowledge you, Tamara, one of the things that you do energetically is you help to clear the space energetically through the chakras so that people can then receive, again, more of that. And I think that's just, be it sh shows beautifully the balance in the, um, the inner self responsibility and self work, and then, you know, seeking the mentorship for personal growth, the balance of the being of who we are and the becoming of who we're meant to be, because we do ebb and flow as we go through the process. And I love that you, you hold space for both of those components for, for clearing the energy and then for welcoming the new expanded energy in, which is- Well, that's, that's because it was because I wanted that. So yeah. like I did in 2016, I did a business course and then I was like, oh, but I like, why can't I lean into this more? And then I did internal work and I was like, okay, great. But that didn't teach me about business. And then I tried to hire the person who taught me, like did the internal work to teach me how she made a business out of the internal work. And that fell through. And then I did Think and Grow Rich. So finally I was like, where can you get this? Where is there a place where you know, you're removing the experiences that no longer serve you, but you're infusing what your stardust and your light is into those spaces. You're giving that space another job, right? Because a junk drawer is still a junk drawer if you don't give it another, like, job. Wow. wow. Like, so, like, energetically, because energy is not created or destroyed, you are harnessing the power of that and transmuting it into something more expansive. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I like to think of like, you know, my engineer mind goes back to like the molecule of water when it becomes in an expansive state of steam, which can be used as steam turbine to like drive stuff. Like it's still the same matter yes. just in a different form. Yes. And that's what an energy healer does is re it, it's not really like removing it. Like it's just, it's allowing it's moving it around or creating some type of space for the new expansive energy to come in. Yes. So, wow. So cool. I love well, like, it's just yeah. like, like, but I just wanted to say that too. Cause like how many times do we speak to people in the energy world that say, I've already done this. I swear I've already done this. I've done this so many times. I'm like, well, have you given this, this beautiful space, another opportunity for a different form of energy? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about that. Right. So that was the whole piece of that too. Right. That is actually really, 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 really huge. What you just said, because I have several people who come to me and say, okay, well, have you done Reiki? Have you done this? Have you done that? Yes. I've done all of it. I have hosted several people on my show who have been some of my own personal energy healers. And there is a time and a place to be in the space of receiving some energetic healing physically. And then there is also an um, invitation or an opportunity to also do the internal work because still, as long as we're seeking outside of ourselves, like you said, as long as we're seeking outside of ourselves, somebody else to heal us, 
we're still not fully in the space of receiving totally because we're receiving the other person's help, which is great when somebody d clears your energy through chakras or does a yoga class with you. But then there's also that invitation to um, do the inner work and fully receive it because the person who's in the doing the healing is still in their space of their perception and their energy and the co-creation, right? So I, I think what I want to say in this is just encourage everybody to know that all of those things are wonderful. All of the things that I talk about on the show, I think are wonderful. That's why I have these guest speakers. Yes, Reiki and energy healing and all of the different forms of healing are amazing. And then also finding a coach or a mentor to help you master the skill of your own energy is something that is like a lifelong gift. And Call it the secret weapon. The secret weapon. It is such the secret. It's like the superpower. The cosmic. Cosmic. It's for the cosmic. I love how, uh, yeah, you use the word just cosmic um, coaching. That's what you're doing. Because we know that all of our experiences, even this experience right here, this isn't about you or me. This is about everybody, the collective, coming together and being curious about their own expansiveness. So, Oh, I'm just so grateful to be sharing this space with you. Like, I want to like have a slumber party. <laughs> oh, please. You're Canadian too, right? No, I'm in Florida. You're in Florida? Yes. I want to be in Florida tomorrow. Well, I'm not a great Canadian. I do not like winters. I'm in Northeast Florida. So if you're ever called to come down, you know, there may be an opportunity. Let me just, let me just throw that out into the universe. There may be an opportunity. I'm being called to create a space to bring other people in from outside of Florida to share this information because um, I love where I live and um, I love where I live. Like I'm a total ocean person, beach lover. And this, there is, there is an opportunity for more of this to be, to be received this information in, you know, my geographic area. So yeah. So just, you know, I'm putting a out. thread in that. Yeah, so, you know, I live I'm, I'm two threading blocks the from the beach with like, you. <laughs> okay, because I have like the hotel is on the beach. Like I've got the whole. I see it. I don't know when it's going to happen, but we'll see. I'll be guided. Absolutely. So, um, is there anything that you'd like to share with our listeners before we go about what you have that's new and upcoming, including your book, any courses that you're running, any opportunities for listeners to? Um, jump onto your website. I'm going to share your website in the notes. I'm going to share your podcast. I'm going to share your books. But if anybody's listening right now, I know you have a couple offerings through your Instagram and through your website. Can you talk just a little bit about those just to, so listeners know where to find you? Uh, there's a beautiful space that we were talking about where you know that you're meant for more in terms of your business or what your, your call here on earth is, right? So the human experience, because to me, we have two experiences. We have our human experience and then we have our cosmic experience. And there's something really powerful that happens when we join them because they oftentimes are separated for a really long time. Like you were saying, like, how did you merge that, right? So there's a, if you feel that call to bring your human experience experience and your cosmic spiritual experience to this understanding, to this knowing of exactly what you're here on this earth to do. And you want to guide into that unknown world of not being able to answer the question. Cause this is the one that most people that I work with come to me with. They're like, I just don't know. I don't know who I'm here to serve. I don't know why I'm here on this earth. I don't know. And some people actually physically don't even like being in their human body right? They want to go back up into the cosmos because it's just so much nicer up there, right? Well, working together then, we, we work through that discomfort together and we go through each of those seven floors and we create this beautiful aligned space, which is the purpose that you were born with on the day that you were born. And we bring you back to that. And that's the Shocker Business Academy. And it truly is the most mystical, magical experience that I get to co-create with others. So that is a call that I would always put out to anyone who feels the the nudge or the urge or that, you know, intuition hit that says, yes, when you hear me speaking about it, I would love to connect with you about that. And then if you're just like, who is this woman? And I don't know who she is. And I want more information. You can follow my YouTube or, or my Enchanted Fairy page 
on Facebook and there are videos every day. There are videos and content every day that I put out to support you in whatever phase of your journey you are on, just to help a little flashlight here, a little flashlight there to light the path for you. So, and always, always I'm human and I answer all my emails myself and messenger and like Instagram. So please like even Jen knows, like she messaged me out of the blue. I was like, Hey, how are you? Like I, I am that there is no like wall or barrier. I love it. Like, even if you were to run into me in anywhere in an airport and be like, Hey, I think I know you, I would be like, Oh, I'm so grateful you came over. So I just invite everybody to reach out and connect. Awesome. Thank you for sharing all of that. And, um, yeah, I'm just super excited to share more of what you're doing with the listeners. I really, I'm really feeling like I'm seeing the faces of people who are really wanting to be, to receive the permission to, to own their intuitive. And I know that I was one of them and, um, you know, it was only about mm, six months ago that I actually shifted the word on my Instagram profile to wellness intuitive. And it was really stuff I had already been doing for the past 10 years. Like I would feel a sensation in my body or, you know, and I would, but I didn't know it. And then when I actually owned it, it expanded. And then it brought all of these new people into my life, which was just so wonderful. And I say that because I say that to say, for those that are listening, that when you say yes to yourself, like the, there's just this magical way that God in the universe just open up to you to just hand you everything that you were ever born to receive. And you do get to choose when you're ready. But if yes. you just energetically, just in that space of knowing your own self-worth and, and keeping the integrity of yourself in your space, if you just lean into just saying yes, even just by listening to the show, by exploring more information, I guarantee mo like the listeners on here are probably going to be expanded just from listening to the show. So thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm so honored and grateful and I love witnessing you. It's inspiring. You're beautiful. You're funny. You're magical. You're all of the things. And all my favorite words. Thank you. All of your favorite words. You're welcome. My pleasure. Um, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you. Thank you for holding this space for everybody to be a part of this experience. I'm so, so honored and grateful to get to share in your energy and in your community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aloha.